In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. We, we confess, confess that, that we have, have turned, turned from you and, and given, given ourselves into the power of sin. sin. We, are we are truly, truly sorry and humbly and repent. repent. In your, your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the 
of peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of fire by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This lament comes from a people who have had their hopes shattered. The visions of a rebuilt Jerusalem and a renewed people of God, spoken in Isaiah 40 through 55, have not been realized. Instead, the people experience ruin, conflict, and famine. This lament calls God to account, to, to be the God who has brought deliverance in the past. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake in your presence, as when fire kindled brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations would tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eyes have seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We, flay, we fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for if you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Consider we are all your people. The word of the Lord.
Please join me in Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts with wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, imagine. A retired pastor was invited to schedule at a preach at a rural church he had never visited before. So he set out one Sunday morning and discovered that he, not all the rural roads were well marked and the directions he had been given left much to be desired, such as turn left at the white oak tree and turn uh, right at the red barn in the country. Just imagine. He did stop at a farm along the way to get directions, but that person misunderstanding directed him down the wrong road. Well, it's a beautiful Sunday morning and the drive was pleasant and took what the pastor thought was maybe a little bit longer than he expected. And finally, he arrived at this little country church as just as the Sunday school was leaving out. And so he got out of his car and he entered the church, greeted everyone as he made his way into the sanctuary and put his sermon notes on, on the pulpit. He conducted the service with confidence. He preached a powerful and timely sermon. And the people attending didn't quite know what to think of this visiting pastor, but they participated attentively. When the worship was conducted, the pastor greeted everyone before heading home. Meanwhile, another small rural church a few miles away, the people are waiting and wondering what possibly could have happened to the pastor that they had scheduled to lead their worship that Sunday morning. And the retired pastor never suspected that he had preached at the wrong church that Sunday morning. There are times when things just seem out of place. And somehow it doesn't fit. Advent in our culture seems to be one of those times. Just after Halloween this year, I began to hear Christmas music. Hallmark TV channel has had Christmas themed movies on all fall. 
the culture of preparations of the holiday seasons, lights, trees, wreaths, candles, shopping. This year, even with the coronavirus, it's a very strange time. Everything just seems one step off the pace. And yet we arrive for worship this second Sunday in Advent. We're greeted by a most unlikely character. John the Baptist doesn't fit our culture, doesn't fit Christmas. Or maybe John got lost and arrived at the wrong place this weekend in a metaphor metaphorical way. He doesn't wear a red suit. He doesn't have a white beard. There's no ho, 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 no tiny reindeer. This John the Baptist is a very different character. His hair is wild. His beard is unkept, wild and unruly clothing. He wears an animal pelt for his clothing. It's smelly. Instead of milk and cookies, his diet is honey-covered bugs. And it's hard to imagine anything more opposite to our image of the culture today. There's no list in making it twice to see who's naughty and nice privately. John ch shouted out publicly for everyone to hear, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Sort of like turning on the TV, expecting your favorite movie, and viewing it said something quite different in its place. It's disconcerting. So these four weeks prior to uh, Christmas is about God coming to us in unexpected ways. First century Palestine. Nothing significant had happened in the Jewish faith for some 400 years. And that was the time of the last prophet, Malachi. The priest at the temple continued to watch and to wait, but religious life was very predictable. And then along comes John. He came, quoting from the Hebrew Bible, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, the voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And when we least expect it, God speaks. We probably all have our Christmas traditions. Some people prepare spiritually with an advent calendar, setting up a nativity creche, you know, the animals, the stable, the shepherds, Mary Joseph, the baby Jesus. We, uh, our family would have special prayers, especially on Christmas morning, uh, celebrating the gift of Jesus before we would exchange our gifts. 1973, now ancient history, um, I visited the Washington House of Studies at Catholic University, a partner to Gettysburg Seminary. And students from all the area seminaries were allowed to take courses at Catholic University. And I was impacted by something I heard late that fall. Uh, the dormitory was on the grounds of a Catholic monastery. And a, someone passing by greeted one of the monks there by with a Merry Christmas. Nice greeting, politically correct at the time, seasonally appropriate, and the monk replied, and may Christ be born in you. That's a pause. May Christ be born in you. That is what we promote these weeks prior to the nativity of our Lord. Prepare Jesus to flourish in us. It's a time of some renewal, some transformation, of discovery in our souls for the holy and divine Christ. At unexpected times and places, God speaks to us. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness announcing that God's time had come. The time was near, he said. And that preparation required that we turn our lives to align ourselves with God. I thought I knew what baptism was in the first century, so again, I looked it up. Baptism, ritual washing, was part of everyday Judaism at that time. In their household, when they got up in the morning, they would wash their hands, their head, and their feet. When they ate, they would wash their hands. When they entered a home, they would wash their feet, their hands, their head. That was part of what they did. It was a ritual of washing. Um, and there were a number of recommended ways to do that in terms of what container contained the water. At the least was a dish of water, static water. 
And then you came to a little jug about this big was appropriate. And then for household, you had a large jug that was maybe this high. Uh, beyond that, they would have maybe a cistern, a, a hewn out receptacle, maybe as big as a bathtub to uh, contain the water. And then finally, and most appropriate, would be running water from a stream or a river. And so followers at that time practiced what they called mitzvah, mikvah. It's a root Hebrew word, mikvah co compares from actually making yarn, taking all those fibers and making a thread out of them, the gathering the fibers into a thread. And so their concept of mikvah was to align, to weave themselves together with the will of God. Daily washing, renewing, weaving into the tapestry of God. For John's baptism in the wilderness, they did so confessing their sins and making their lives one with God. And that's how their preparations took place. And so who are you, they asked John. So compelling was John's message that some have supposed that he might be the Messiah, the Christ, the chosen one of God. He said, no, 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 not me. By comparison, the one who is to come after is so much more powerful, more greater, more esteemed that I'm not even worthy to be the lowest slave to kneel my face in the dust to untie his sandal. Let me give you a cultural comparison. It's also a who are you. It's a guessing game. For those of you who are watching online, I want you to think here for a minute and don't, don't look it up before I finish. So today is December the 6th. Today is a saint's feast day. He was a bishop in the seaport town of Myra, now the country of Turkey, in the 4th century. He is the patron saint of sailors, merchants, archers, meaning bow and arrow people, repentant thieves, prostitutes, children, brewers, pawnbrokers, unmarried people, and students. He was arrested and imprisoned by Emperor Domitian in the early 300s. Records show that he was a participant in the Council of Nicaea in the year 325. And the earliest images we have of him is a tall, um, slender, bald-headed man with a short beard. Um, he's renowned as a strong follower of Christ, very zealous and very seriously devout for the rights of disadvantaged people. December the 6th. He is no more, he's known culturally from a legend of compassion, of becoming aware of a poor widower father who had three daughters. And without money for their marriage dowry, they would have had no future. They would have been sold as servants or as slaves without dowry money to provide for their future. And that was the culture of the day. So this bishop, knowing that, one evening as he was walking by their home, looked in the window and saw that they had their clothing hung in front of the hearth to dry, and he threw some money uh, into the hearth for their future. And that bishop's name was Nicholas, whom we know as Santa Nicholas, Santa Klaus, and today really is his festival day. And I find it curious sometimes and disturbing that this bishop, this faithful, zealot, honored saint of the church has been elevated in worldwide culture to be more highly celebrated than the Messiah and Lord whom he served and whom, to whom he devoted his life. Something just to think about, that disconnect here of our culture. It's also about distance. Advent is about bringing this separation, this distance, this gap between God uh, God's heart and our own. The distance between cultural holidays and the spiritual mikvah of becoming aligned with God's will. A final story. Not so far away in distance or in time, one cold snowy Christmas morning, a Navy chaplain was conducting an outdoor worship service in a deployed base area of operations and no one was required to attend. The captain of the country, uh, ca ca captain of the uh, company, Rex, decided to attend, 
not because he was a real believer, but out of a good example for the men. And nearly 200 showed up for that Sunday, that Christmas morning service, and they sat on their helmets in the snow, facing a portable altar and a guitar provided music accompaniment. But something happened to the captain that morning. Somehow God broke through. Rex thought of everything that was precious to him, his home, his family, his infant daughter. And when they sang those Christmas hymns in the frosty air, he comprehended that celebrating Christ doesn't depend on traditional accessories of trees and lights and being all dressed up, lavish meals and generous gifts. And writing home to his wife, Rex said, Christmas is best celebrated as we voluntarily replenish our personal faith in the company of other people. So in the coming weeks, consciously keep in mind that Jesus really is the reason for all of this. Advent reminds us that God breaks into our lives in unexpected ways, unanticipated places. And it is discordant now to hear the voice of the John the Baptist call to each of us, prepare the way of the Lord. God's grace and peace be with you. We grow bold now to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join now in, in faith and in hope as we uh, engage in the prayers of the people. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and your relationship to it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and power 
to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with, with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who may live with depression, anxiety, pain, addiction, or other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering, support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who have died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, whose names we know or who still whose names are unknown only to you. Sustain all who yet yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, or through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts ourselves, our time, our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered and feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new on the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Take and eat.
Again, after the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, all of you drink of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this, do it for the remembrance of me. Take and drink. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For those who may view, be viewing um, on the internet at home, I invite you to join with a prayer for spiritual communion, although not here face to face. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you present here sacramentally. Come now spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself entirely to you. Never be separated from me. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts now to receive God's blessing upon your day and upon your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.